Hello, this is the introductory video to Woodwind Instrument Designer. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of what this program is, variously called Woodwind Instrument Designer, WI Designer, or as Clint Goss would like to call it, the WID. Um, I'll tell you about who made it, how you can get it, what it can do, uh, some of the interface interaction philosophy uh, that we use, and then we'll get to play with it a little bit. So what is the program? It's a program to assist in the design of woodwind instruments. Currently, it is limited to fipple flutes, primarily whistles and Native American style flutes. At its heart, is a state-of-the-art acoustic engine uh, that understands the geometry of these instruments and can very accurately predict the playing frequencies. Um, in essence, what notes they play. Uh, wrapped around that is an optimizer that then helps you design an instrument based upon its geometry or geometry constraints, uh, what your fingering pattern is that you want to use to cover the holes, what notes you want it to play. Um, it is different than many of the other programs you, see, you have used in that rather than iteratively vary a number of parameters, hole size, hole position, whatever, and then have the program determine the tuning and then try it again and again. This program has you set constraints and then push a button and it'll manipulate all those variables concurrently. The program was written in Java, so it should run transparently on any platform, uh, any operating system that has uh, a Java JRE installed. It should have the look and feel of native applications on that, that platform. And its cost? Pretty nominal, it's free. This is an open source project under the GPL license. Uh, you can download source and program absolutely free. And if you have the desire, you can get involved in the future development of this program. Currently, it has been the, the labor of love of three IT professionals. Edward Court, that's me. Um, I've been making Native American style flutes for a dozen years. You may have used my prior program, uh, N.A. Flutomat. Burton Patkow, who's a whistle maker, and Anton Lefebvre, who has a PhD in music technology. Burton and Antoine are the major movers behind the integral engine and theory that underlies this program. If you want to jump ahead, uh, the program has been hosted on GitHub, and so there's the URL for GitHub and our project. Um, the introduction is on the wiki page on GitHub, and browse through that wiki. There's lots of interesting stuff in there. As I said, this is the first of a tutorial on the program. You'll find other links on that third URL. And if you got to get it now, and that's the purpose of this video, to help you decide, do you got to get it um, right now, the fourth URL is a link to get the download. So what does the program do in general? Uh, again, today it supports whistles and Native American style flutes. Uh, in the future, we intend to add other woodwinds, uh, reed instruments, transverse flutes, maybe end blown flutes, depending on the interest, both of any developers that we have on the project and the outflow of support we get. It 
as opposed to many programs, is not constrained to tunings or fingerings or note names or temperaments. Uh, you get to, to specify them any way you want to your heart's content. Um, it's not limited to straight bore flutes. Uh, you can create um, a bore of arbitrary complexity for tuning evaluation. As I said, the underlying engine is very robust. For designing bore profiles, currently it is somewhat more limited. We support the design of profiles that are straight or that have a single tapered section in, in the, the bore. It supports any number of tone holes. If you want to make that, that flute that has 14 holes in it that you cover with your toes, uh, we'll support it. And it supports user-defined constraints for any parameter that it's using in the optimization. That is, you can say the hole size has to be greater than 0.8 inches and less than a half inch. The spacing has to be, hole spacing has to be less than an inch and a quarter and so forth. So let's now, I'm going to bring up the program, so take a quick glance at what I'm going to talk about here as far as interaction philosophy about the study view is key, the interface, interface tries to be smart, and it doesn't force you to save intermediate files all over the place. So let's get out of this baby and bring up the program. When you download the program, it'll explode into one directory that has these subdirectories in it and has a jar file. This is the program. Depending on the operating system, this may be, be a different view. Um, you may invoke this jar file in different ways. Um, I'm working on a Windows, Windows 8 platform. All I have to do is double click this program. So let's do it. And let's get rid of the Explorer. This is Woodwind Instrument Designer with no files open. Here is the study pane that I talked about and it's set up right now for a Native American uh, flute. If you wanted to do a whistle, you would choose whistle from this uh, options pane. And now the study has a different representation. Various other parts of the program are modified on the fly to, to fit with that representation. Since I'm a, a NAF maker, I'm really only going to talk about NAFs here. So let's put her back to here. Now I said the interface tried to be smart. You'll see that this toolbar, none of these buttons are, are active. In the tool menu, none of the menu items are active. It doesn't have anything to work on yet. So let's open a flute file. And go into instruments. And let's choose a flute that has a three-quarter inch bore. So here's the characteristics of this, this selected instrument, a three-quarter bore, and um, I think it'll make a nice A4 flute. So let's open it. And here is what an instrument looks like, and we'll get into this in more detail in subsequent videos, but it has a mouthpiece specification with parameters for the mouthpiece. It has a bore specification uh, with at various points on the bore, various positions along that bore, um, the bore diameter, and you can have any number of these what we call bore points. For this flute, it's a straight bore flute. It has the same diameter through the whole length 
uh, three quarters of an inch. And we've got some starting values for a flute. Um, from hole six, top of, top of the flute, as uh, flutes, Native American flutes are, are um, typically laid out. We have the positions of each one of the holes, the spacing between that hole and the hole above, its hole diameter, and the, the wall thickness, or the height of the hole. We can modify this on the fly in the program. Now when we look at, at this toolbar or at the tool menu, one option now is, is open to us. We can, we can see what the flute looks like. And you can see if we expand it out, it's a straight bore flute. The holes are evenly spaced for the top and evenly spaced for the bottom holes. Um, that's a, an aesthetic that's typical in Native American flutes. Um, and it doesn't look too bad. Now let's, let's do something with that flute. So let's open a tuning. And I've got them arranged somewhat logically. We'll go up and here's where I have my tunings. And I said this will make an A4 flute. So let's bring up um, this file, which is equal temperament. It's for a six hole flute and it's chromatic tuning. And it uses my standard fingering um, pattern. Let's open it up. So here's what a tuning file looks like. Symbol names, and these symbol names can be anything you like them to be. The frequencies for each one of the notes in this tuning. And we offer you help in laying out what those frequencies are, or you can enter them in scratch right here, or as at, at the end we'll go through the actual construction wizard for making tunings, and the fingerings. And these fingerings are live. If you want to change them right here, you can change them. And that will be used in the program when it runs. And weights, which we'll get to in a little bit. So now we have a couple more buttons that are, that are active. This calculates the instrument tuning table. So it's going to see how close this flute is to this tuning specification. Bang, and there it is. And it's not a bad flute. I wouldn't give you a starter flute that's too ugly. Notice how I can rearrange and resize columns. So this is a chromatic flute. Um, it wasn't created as optimized for all those notes. You can see that the C5 is quite a bit out. Um, so is the D5. Those are the major third and the uh, augmented fourth or minor fifth and then the second octave we did not optimize at all they're they're way out so let's see how you would run this program you'll notice that this little button optimize instrument isn't enabled yet that's because we haven't picked an optimizer and with each optimizer strategy there is constraints that are associated with that, that optimizer. So we're not going to change the bore profile in this first introductory uh, flute. So we're just going to change the size and position of the holes. Now, here the program helps you a little bit in finding the right ones. We could just do open, but we're going to do open constraints. And it's going to, and let me show you why you want to do it this way, it's going to find the appropriate set of files that are for a, a NAF study, for that optimizer, for that flute with six holes. 
And so it's going to give me these options. Well, let's make an inch and a quarter maximum spacing um, flute, which most, most people can reach just fine. We're going to open that. Now here's what constraints look like. For each one of the parameters, and these are all the parameters that this particular optimizer is going to vary, um, we can set an upper and lower bound. I've set this to be in units of measure of inches. You can set it uh, to feet, to millimeters, to meters, um, the, the usual units of measure, and it'll accommodate it. Um, and I've left these constraints pretty much wide open. Um, I'm letting the bore length be from seven and a half inches to 27 and a half inches. I'm sure an A4 will fit in there. Um, I have stubby fingers, so I don't want the holes to be any closer than 0.8 inches. And here is that one and a quarter inch between holes, between hole six and five, and hole five and four, between hole four and hole three, in separate hands, so I'm letting that spacing be, be pretty big, and then back to one and a quarter inches. I'm letting the hole sizes be anywhere from an eighth of an inch up to a half an inch. And like I say, it's unlikely we're going to hit any of those constraint boundaries. Now, since we have a constraint specified, a flute and a tuning, a starter for that flute, this button is up. This button is active. So let's push it. And it takes a little bit. Um, it can take, depending on the complexity of the problem, up to, depending on how fast your computer is, uh, up to two minutes to run. Um, it's not dying. Uh, just, just be patient. Uh, this took six seconds to run, so this console view is kind of stream of consciousness of what the, what the program is doing. It's whatever the, the developers decided were, was useful to print out for the user. So uh, it went through uh, 82,000 different tuning calculations and tried 5,400 different sets of parameters to come up with a solution. Um, this final error isn't zero, so it's going to have a little bit of error in this flute. But it got rid of, it only has 5% of the error that was in the original flute. So it got rid of 95% of the error that we found in this starter flute for tuning. So let's see what the tuning is. And notice that it has made a new instrument file. And here's the new instrument. And that instrument file is selected in the study view. Only things that are selected in the study view are acted upon by all of these buttons, with, with one minor exception that I'll get into in another tutorial. So let's see what the tuning of this baby is. So instead of a 21 cent average deviation mistuning for all of these notes on the other flute, we're down to about a 5 cent uh, deviation. So let's compare them side by side. and see what we have for bad notes. My criteria for a well-tuned flute is a deviation off by no more than about five cents or so. So the fundamental, the A4 is off by seven and a half cents. Um, most of the other tunings we have, the um, the minor seventh is off by six cents. Um, the major seventh is off by 11. Um, and I, I like two fingerings if I can get them for the minor ninth, just because it's easy to finger one going up the scale and the other one going down the scale. But I'm willing to, to make compromises there. So we can see that this closed fingering for the A sharp, um, I'm going to tell you from experience, is driving some of these other errors. 
So let's keep track of these guys. I'm going to, instead of Untitled 1, I'm going to name this, and I'm going to name it, oh, All Notes. So I said this A sharp five closed fingering is likely killing us. So let's change the tuning here. And since I may change this a little bit, let's take it out of that interface. So let's make it float. Let's move it out of here so that I can find it easily rather than go through the tabs that we're gonna generate. Okay, it's still live with the program. Don't have to worry that I've moved it somewhere else. And now we're gonna play with the weightings. So the weightings are used both in whether that note is going to, to show up on the tuning table and how it's going to be weighted in the optimizer that does this design. So I'm going to weight this closed tuning to zero. It's not going to be used now in either of, of those operations. And we'll start with the all notes. It doesn't really matter which is the starting instrument here. And we'll do another optimization. Notice I didn't save any files. It's still all working in memory. Um, now it's final error, um, a little smaller. Let's see what its tuning is. And we're down to 3.6 uh, average deviation. The fundamental is now within our, our criteria for being a good tuning. Um, the only notes that are slightly out of criteria are the seventh notes, the major and minor sevens, and they're pretty close. I'd probably make this flute as is and just undercut these, this fifth hole, um, second down from the top a little bit, and get the whole thing in tune. But now let's look at the flute, because we're just going to do one more scenario here. Listen, notice that there's a little bit of unequal spacing in between between hole six and five compared to hole five and hole four. They're pretty close, and if we looked at that flute, we might say, you know, that looks pretty good. But you can see this hole spacing is a little smaller than this hole spacing. Well, this program also supports constraining the spaces in between holes as groups. So that's called the grouped hole position in size. And let's just bring up that I have a prefab one um, in the samples that has two groups. And let's see what those two groups are by opening it. It has one group with hole six, five, and four with the same spacing, anywhere between 0.8 and 1.25, and a second group with holes three, two, and one, and a space in between that we've let float up to three inches. Again, the same broad range that we can have for hole size. And let's run that one. Now you would expect with more constraints, now we've, we've, we've made equal spacing on those holes, we won't get quite as good an answer, and we don't, but it's very close. Uh, it's, it's hard to predict how far off pu putting a constraint in there will change the answer. So we had a final error up on a prior run of 184, and now we have 187. Let's see what its tuning is. and its tuning is not very different. Let's bring this across. Yeah, 
and so yeah the fundamental has gone a little little worse but not much and in general in fact our, our seventh notes are a little bit better here um, but instead of 3.63 for an average deviation we had a 3.66 pretty good. I'd make this flute rather than this flute. And so here is that flute. I think I'll call that quits for... Now, now we, we're probably going to want to save that file. We'll use it again. So we would change the name, we'd change the description, and we do a save and save it wherever we, we wanted. We might save it in that same instrument directory or we might have a, a separate directory where we want to put those. Now let's clean this up a little bit and I'll show you the last feature that says, oh, got to get this. So let's put this back in the interface. We'll dock it. And now it's back where it was. And that is the support for doing anything we want, and, and I really mean anything, uh, in a tuning file. So there's a little wizard here, and not so little. It's a tuning wizard, and it has seven pages in it that you don't have to use all of them um, to lay out what is ultimately a tuning file. So let's go to that. So. Ultimately, you're going to make a fully populated tuning file, and let's bring up that same tuning file we have in the other interface that has modifiable names, frequencies, and fingerings. Um, weights in this interface are all going to be set to one. We'll, we'll modify them when we actually use them in the program. You can add rows, you can delete rows, you can change the tuning, um, but that's kind of leave, leaving you hanging. So let's start from the beginning. Just I'm going to scan through this very quickly. I'll have a, a complete tutorial on going through this tuning wizard. There's a page in the tuning wizard for each reusable component. The scale symbol page allows you to define or edit the symbols that you're going to use for each note in the scale. The music, musical temperament page lets you define or edit the intervals between in frequency units between each one of the notes in the scale relative to the root. And the scale with intervals page then lets you combine your symbols with your your temperament, your intervals, and give you a scale with intervals. So intervals that make sense to you with symbols that make sense to you. The scale with frequencies page then lets you take that scale with intervals and apply a reference note with a frequency and that reference note will be one of the notes in that scale that you you've pulled in uh, to generate what we think of as a scale which is a scale symbol names and frequencies it'll do the computation for you so you can make a a modern concert tune scale with A equal 440, or a Verdi tune scale with A equals 432, or any, any other tuning um, that is to your desire. Fingering pattern page lets you define fingering patterns that you want to persist as standalone units um, all by themselves, and finally we get to the ultimate page where you combine a scale with fingerings to f create your tuning file. As I say, I'll go through this at a much slower pace in a separate video tutorial. So let's kick out of this and close down what we're doing. So again, you can get the program here if you want it. Um, keep checking this link. I will be 
at least for the near future, continually being uh, creating these kinds of tutorials, hopefully a lot shorter than this one. And enjoy.